He said it's about racial justice while the order applies to all who meet its criteria and the impact is a triumphant victory for uh, African-Americans and other Marylanders of color who were disproportionately arrested, convicted and sentenced for actions yesterday that are lawful today. It says 100, more than 150,000 misdemeanor convictions for simple possession of cannabis will be affected by the order, which also will cover more than 18,000 misdemeanor convictions for use of or possession with the intent to use drug paraphernalia, according to a summary by the governor's office. You know, one of the things that I also have a problem with, they don't do felonies. Mm -hmm. So if you got a felony marijuana conviction, you're not getting anything. Yep. These are people who only basically had had what personal use levels. So if you were somebody who was considered intent to distribute, and depending on the state, intent to distribute could be two ounces. Which for those who smoke know that two ounces isn't a whole lot. But that can be enough to, to tip it into a felony, depending on which county and precinct or which state you're in. Hmm. So Governor Wes Moore of Maryland decided to pardon 175,000 people for prior marijuana convictions. Now, in this discussion, I'm not going to be using that word. Mm, as often because we're on the tube. But just to really point, hit, on the, hit home on the point, that's a lot of people who are convicted for plant. Yep. Um, so when you first saw this story, what was your initial thoughts to this? Was it, was it, uh, a positive view? Was it kind of skeptical? What was it? First, and any, anytime I see something like this, it always starts off with skepticism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always start off because I'm a, I'm a skeptic by nature. I gotta I gotta look for it. I gotta vet it. I gotta prove it, and then I can start rocking with it if I can see things that that I can build on. Um, and then also I went from my knowledge, which I know of this governor in particular and the state of Maryland just in general. Mm -hmm. And he has a very, very mixed, he's a very mixed bag of nuts. Um, excuse the phrase. It, it, there's some good in there. There's plenty of bad in there. There's some, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to, what to make of this with gotcha. him. So I was very, very like on my guard to it. Initially, my initial instinct years ago would have been, oh, yeah, that's definitely good. You know, um, but I was like, let me see, because there's obviously there got to be something else going on that I don't know about. Yeah. And, and also, I, I think of what else could you have done to add on to that? Because I believe if you if people have been unjustly tried and unjustly convicted, I believe in restitution also for what has been taken away from those people. So you don't just open the doors and say, hey, walk out and hey, all, all's forgiven. Okay. All right. <laughs> so let's get into the story. See, I knew it was a good idea to have you on for this story. Mm -hmm. All right. See, see, this is what happens when you when you when you do nuance. See. See, Marcus is good at nuance, so let's get into this story. So this says thousands, tens of thousands of Marylanders received pardons for marijuana convictions. So if you see Governor Westmore right there after he just signed the pardons, you see a whole bunch of melanated people behind them clapping. All right. So it says Maryland Governor Westmore ordered more than 175,000 pardons for marijuana convictions on Monday, saying the most sweeping state level pardon in any state will help reverse harms of the past caused by the war on drugs. During a news conference, Moore said that the executive order will affect tens of thousands of Marylanders convicted of misdemeanors. Some may have had more than one conviction pardon through the process. Quote, we are taking action that are intentional that are sweeping and unapologetic. And this is the largest such action in our nation's history, end quote. 
through the pardons will not result in anyone being released from incarceration and nor will they result in having any past convictions automatically expunged from a person's background check. Advocates praise the move as a way of removing barriers to housing unemployment, I'm sorry, housing employment or educational opportunities based on convictions for conduct that is no longer illegal. I see something wrong in this. Marcus, please what? let me know what you see. Do you see something wrong too? I see something majorly wrong in this story. Please, please, you know, how do you pardon somebody but don't release them? That doesn't make any sense. Keep going. going. How do you pardon somebody? Because normally you pardon somebody who is being incarcerated. If a person has been released, that means that they've already did their time and they've already fulfilled a full sentence yeah or released on some form of parole or probation or whatever so basically what you're doing is you're like blanketly like saying okay that time where you were incarcerated or whatever it just didn't happen and everything is fine now what does that do for those people that, bro this is like this is like hitting somebody with your car. But, but no, hitting somebody else's car with your car. And then you write a note saying, sorry. And then mm-hmm. you give them that sorry. And then you just go on your merry little way. Wait, aren't you supposed to exchange insurance information so that that person can actually be made whole again because of what you did to them? Wow, that that is, whoo, whoo, and they really propped this up like he really did something. Yeah, he thought he was cooking. He thought he was cooking, and he barely even got the groceries. Mm. This dude wild. just cut this dude just cut out coupons and put them in his pocket. That's about it. <laughs> I mean, he didn't even get to the grocery store. He's just walking around with the coupons. Talking about, hey, we got food. I mean. <laughs> this is this is ridiculous. Like, so so so. What about people who, you know, rest their souls who have passed away since then, who might be on that list? What did that do for them? Not a damn thing. What about people who still are struggling to get work? Because even if you do expunge the record, like I, I saw somebody put, if you expunge the record and you've had a certain amount of time of inactivity in the workforce that counts against you also because you have to explain where were you during this time period well um i i I was incarcerated but now it's no longer a crime because i've been pardoned from that you you think that that's going to work out also what about the people who it happened to them when they were what 17 18 tried as an adult or something like that or in the process of college and that discontinued their education now stunting their possible uh possible amount that they can make through through a career path i mean man uh, the 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 games that these dnc and i and i knew i i should have knew something was up with this dude because of how much money he has put towards the police and uh trying to put the um for those who don't know in Maryland, he has also took the Fraternal Order Police, and he's putting them on the board of uh, of the qualified immunity and uh, going after uh, any kind of accountability on police interactions and police brutality. So he, the board that's supposed to investigate them, like internal affairs uh, on the state level, he's put he's given them a seat at the table to help review the process. Oh yeah, he he's a piece of work. He's a piece of work. I want to cuss so bad right now. I want to cuss, but I, I'm trying to make this into a family show. Let me tell you. Ooh, let, let's get back into this article. Mm-hmm. Wes, you grind me. Ooh, boy. <laughs> okay. Oh, don't don't forget their version of Cop City too that he's uh funding. 
Oh, of course. Oh, of course. <laughs> All right. Um, it says, though the pardons will not result in anyone being released, that to me right there is like, bruh, what the point of pardoning somebody if they're not going to be released? Now, I get if they have other convictions, right? But still, right? It should at least shorten their 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 sentences um and then it says nor will they have any ha and having any past convictions automatically expunged from a person's background check why not oh sorry Ooh. that's why not why not expunge it no he's not going to expunge it so that means that when they look it up it's still on there so that pardon is nothing but complete lip service. I mean, if you at least expunge it, maybe for some of those people who, okay, you did a couple of months and it did not, it did not infect your employment, you can kind of eh, get by if it was expunged. But now you basically make it to a point where it really does nothing. It is all, you know what this is for. I bet you if we look it up, he's running for re-election. How, wait, how old is Westmore? He's, 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 not, he's not that old. No, he's yeah, not that old. Early 40s. Yeah, he's not that old at all. Um, hang on. He's 45. Okay. Westmore got five years on me. All right. Bet. So, presidential aspirations. Yep. Oh, yeah. Presidential aspirations. 45 years old? Oh yeah. Oh, he got time. He's he got time. He's at least trying to do two terms as governor, right? And so he wants this on his record saying, Well, I also pardon 175,000 people. But what did it actually do? So then when he gets to you know start running for president in 2028 or in 2032. Then he can go, I did all this. And then people go, oh, yay, yay. When yep. in reality, did he actually do anything for the people of that state that was substantive, that was concrete, that was tangible? Bruh. He, 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 what he's doing is he's learning from what Kamala did, Kamala's mistakes, and he's pulling a Cory Booker. And for those who don't know what I mean by that, pulling a Cory Booker, Cory Booker went and lived in the housing projects and, and pretended as if I'm with you. I feel what you feel and mm -hmm. did nothing to improve those people's life. Oh, my God. But He's it's a good a photo op. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, they both ball. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. And did you know he signed it with the pen from from that social justice group? To, to add on to uh because they have like this orange pen and he's like oh i'm signing it with this pen so uh it helps it helps to um finalize the journey that they've been on to get this justice oh lord let's continue in this article uh let me see here uh, it says Heather Warnken, executive director for the University of Baltimore School of Law Center for Criminal Justice Reform, described the pardon as a win for thousands of Marylanders getting a fresh start to pursue education, employment, and other forms of economic opportunity without the stain of criminal conviction. Let me ask you this. Um, how is that a win for thousands um, when they don't get it expunged. I mean, you can have felonies and still uh, go to college, so I don't get how that even affects your education at okay. all. Okay, so that, that part's debunked. Employment, it's not expunged. That's definitely gonna help you with your employment. <laughs> yeah, and what is other forms of economic opportunity? What is that? What does that mean? <laughs> That's called he has some lawyers in his uh in his staff who know how to put out vague talking points that sound like you're adding something to it. That's you know, that's Kamala level word salad. 
All they need is the cackling, and they're pretty much their tra transition is complete. Mm -hmm. uh, it says recreational cannabis was legalized in Maryland in 2023 after voters approved a constitutional amendment in 2022 with 67% of the vote. Maryland decriminalized possession of personal use amounts of cannabis on January 1st, 2023. Now 24 states in the District of Columbia have legalized recreational cannabis. Um, Moore said the legalization does not turn back the clock on decades of harm that was caused by this war on drugs. He continued, it, does, it doesn't erase the fact that black Marylanders were three times more likely to be arrested for cannabis than white Marylanders before legalization. It doesn't erase the fact that having a conviction on your record means a harder time with everything, everything from housing to employment to education. Why did you not expunge it then? What? That's, I don't get that part. That's that's the insult to injury. You could have expunged it. You could have made things better, but you just said, no, I'm not going to help them. I'm not going to expunge it. I have the ability to help you, but I'm not. It's like, JB, I know you were falling over and, you know, you're in the pool now. And you're, 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 you're kicking and swinging because, you know, you're struggling there. And um, I could reach my hand out, but... Um, I need both hands to drink my coffee. What was it in the book of James? Do not say to someone, oh, uh, who is hungry and Oh, naked. yeah, 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 yeah. Do not be, uh, do not go to them and say, oh, be warm and well fed. If you have the means to actually help him, essentially, I'm paraphrasing, to go ahead and yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. What more is actually a Christian? He's not doing a very Christian thing right now. Uh-huh. And then it goes on paraphrasing, you know, don't say, oh, be full when you know you have the means to feed them. Like, here's here's my issue. It's like, well, I guess somebody in power should do something about that expunging, shouldn't you? Dude, you're the governor. You're the one who had you're the literal executive of the state of Maryland, and you can't put in a program, an executive order. Oh, yeah, we're also going to expunge anybody that has a marijuana conviction in the state. And, and you know, on top of him not expunging it, do you know that it keeps them on the rolls? Because there's a little something else that he's working on. It's an interstate cooperation thing where other law enforcements can be able to check people who are within the system. And so, therefore, by not expunging it, you're still in the system for if you travel into another state that um, that's still going to be on there. So let's say, for instance, you're in Georgia, which it is definitely not legal in Georgia. Um, uh, they'll know that, wait a minute, this person had a conviction for uh, marijuana possessing. More than likely, they might have marijuana in their car. I smell, I smell marijuana. Get out the car. Now, I don't know if somebody like him has taken it to that level of, okay, this plus this plus this can equal this. But by his actions, that's the kind of thing he opens somebody up to. Jeez Louise, man, I'm telling you. All right. Says so Shiloh Jordan, who lost his job on his second day of work after a minor cannabis conviction appeared in a background check by his employer, intended the news conference. Moore noted that even though Jordan went back to college and now works for the Center of Urban Families in Baltimore, he still had the cannabis conviction on his record. And Moore said, well, today that ends. Uh, Jordan said that he was thankful that his experience could be used as a testimony and offered a lot of change for the people of Maryland. He says it means a lot because I know a lot of people have been convicted for petty cannabis charges, and it really affected their whole way of life and their whole way of thinking. Maryland Attorney General Anthony Brown, who attended the news conference, said this action was long overdue. As a nation, we have to take we have taken far too long to correct the injustices of the system that is supposed to be just for all. 
the attorney general also noted that the magnitude of the governor's actions and said it was about equity equity that really to me is really just a paper tiger it doesn't really have any tangible actions but i digress he said it's about racial justice while the order applies to all who meet its criteria and the impact is a triumphant victory for uh, african americans and other Marylanders of color who were disproportionately arrested, convicted, and sentenced for actions yesterday that are lawful today. It says 100, more than 150,000 misdemeanor convictions for simple possession of cannabis will be affected by the order, which also will cover more than 18,000 misdemeanor convictions for use of or possession with the intent to use drug paraphernalia, according to a summary by the governor's office. You know, one of the things that I also have a problem with, they don't do felonies mm -hmm. so if you got a felony marijuana conviction you're not getting anything yep these are people who only basically had had what personal use levels so if you're somebody who was considered intent to distribute and depending on the state intent to distribute could be two ounces which for those who smoke know that two ounces isn't a whole lot, but that can be enough to, to tip it into a felony, depending on which county and precinct or which state you're in. Mm. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm still trying. I, I, you read one thing in there, which I just got to kind of get some clarification on. So this is not expunged, right, JB? No. So not expunged. So what is it just going to show you were pardoned for your marijuana conviction? How does that help you? How does it help you? I'm, I'm trying to understand that because if an yeah. employer sees that, that's still not going to be good. Yeah, because it's like, yeah, you were forgiven by the state. But what does that have to do with me as an employer? Because it's like it, it's like in the military, if you got. If you got discharged and you don't have, if you have other than honorable general, neither one of those are good. Mm -hmm. You might as well have a dishonorable. I mean, they look at it the same. Yeah. It says now that Moore has ordered the pardons, the Maryland judiciary will ensure each individual electronic docket is updated with an entry indicating the conviction has been pardoned by the governor. A process should take about two weeks. The governor office said so. It's basically going to say, well, yeah, I mean, you were convicted for a misdemeanor for a marijuana possession charge, and that conviction is still there, but it's all good. The, the governor said you've been pardoned. And here's my question. Here's my problem. If it's no longer illegal, The pardon said the a pardon means that you did something wrong, but you were forgiven. Mm -hmm. When in reality, now that we know that there's nothing wrong with it, why shouldn't we go further and say it should be what should at the very least be expunged? So that nobody can see that that is on your record. Because you can't get, you know, the the times in your life where you tried to advance yourself further and somebody saw that on your record. You can't get that time and those resources back. So at the very least, you should get it expunged. I just, well, this, this, still, this still leaves you open to discrimination because what about a more conservative-minded person who they don't care what the law says. They still look at it as, that's the devil's lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> they still look at it as obviously this tells me a lot about their character that they would actually engage in in marijuana or weed or grass or whatever name you want to call it that oh this shows that this is not the type of person that I want in my my business and so for those people who think like that it allows them to still have a prejudice against you that they can use the biasness and notice I didn't put it on racial lines because there are, there are people of all races who are against marijuana. So anybody who's older, who, well, it's not even just older people, but 
a lot of older people had that because of their generation, how they grew up looking at it. Yeah. It still allows them to have that biasness and, and hold that against you in employment. Yeah. Now let's see what Governor Westmore said, because uh, of course, you know, he, he has his, uh, he has his take. Oh, geez. Do I really want to listen to this? All right, let's go. You know, we, we, we voted as a state uh, that we would actually have a recreational cannabis market by, by over 70% that the state voted for this. And over the process of the past year and a half, we have rolled out what many call the most, not just equitable, but also the fairest cannabis rollout, recreational cannabis rollout in this country, where we have 174 new social equity licenses, new owners and new distributors for, for this new cannabis market. But I also know this, you cannot celebrate the, the benefits of legalization if you do not deal with the consequences of criminalization. It's not fair and it doesn't work. That we have now a multi-billion dollar burgeoning industry around the country, and we have people who still cannot get student loans because of cannabis convictions. That we have people who still cannot get mortgages because of a misdemeanor cannabis conviction. This is what... What are your thoughts on what you just said? But they're still going to fall. They're still going to fall under that same kind of scrutiny because it's still there. If you don't expunge it, it did nothing. You literally did nothing. Yeah. And but you're you're and, and, and it's oh my gosh, how they make it seem like they're actually doing some kind of fight. Like I'm fighting for you. It, it's so disgusting how how they cosplay being a hero for the people while at the yeah. same time screwing over the people. I mean, it goes back to what, uh, what Malcolm was saying, you know, about, about the red and the blue team, you know, one's a wolf, one's a Fox. Yeah. This also reminds me of what uh, Malcolm said about what is progress. Progress is sticking a knife in six inches and then pulling it back out two inches and saying that's progress. Mm hmm. Like, how is that progress? And, you know, I, I want to ask you this. What do you say to the liberals, to the Democrats who say, well, you're being so negative. This, is, you know, it may be a small win, but it's, it's still a win, right? You know, we can get further next time. What would you say to people who, who push back in that way? Well, for somebody, especially on this particular topic that would say that to me, I would say but it's legalized in the state. There is no other opportunity to fix this for the people who are wronged under this. There's, it's too late to do anything for anybody else because now they won't get arrested for this at all. So other yeah. people are not going to be held to, held to this same unfair, unfair account. Um, yeah. And also this mindset of, well, I mean, we can get more last time. You basically did this through like a form of an executive order, meaning you could have did it however you wanted to do it. It wasn't a bill that came to your desk that had to go through committee and was, OK, well, this is going to be in that's going to be in there or it's all or nothing. This is something you had the ability to craft however you wanted to craft it. And this is what you chose to do. I mean, this is this this is perfectly emblematic of almost what Obama did with the housing crash. He had the ability to put the money in the people's hands and let them take care of their housing issues instead of putting it in the bank's hands. And Obama chose to give the money to the banks. What I would say to liberals like that is these are the instances right here where you can tell where your real intentions are because you had the ability all on your own to make this situation way better. Instead, everywhere where you should go right, you're turning left. Everywhere where you should go up, you're going down. So mm -hmm. I would just leave it at that. You had the opportunity. You can't blame this on Republicans. You can't blame this on nobody else. You could have, you could have, you could have, I mean, helped people in so, in, in so much of a ways by just doing one little thing, expunging it. Yeah. But you no. just chose not to do it. And no. there's not even a question from these liberals to why you're not doing it. 
Yep. And uh, just to add to your point, you literally have one of the blackest cities in your state, Baltimore, that you could have helped so many people in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. And yet you, you said, you said the I love you without the actual meaning behind it. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's, 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 it's on its face, oh. it's just. JB, I don't know. Did you did you watch um The Wire? No, I I never got to watch it. He is reminding me perfectly of what was it? Uh, Mayor Carcetti, I believe that's what the name. I don't know if y'all remember it out there. He's showing the backroom dealing, and okay, well, we can do this one little thing, but at the same time, we want to make sure that for these other constituents that we right. still look like we're tough. On, and this is. What what the Clintons call it triangulating. We're gonna we're gonna make it seem like we're doing one thing, but at the other time we're still so we're making both people happy while mm-hmm. really doing nothing. Yeah, the the second uh the second uh governor. Well, he started off being mayor, and then he was uh, towards the end. He was, I think, yeah, he did become governor at the end. But this is the kind of stuff that he was doing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So. Um, one of my things that I wanted to bring up was, did he go far enough? No. But at the same time, I think that the best way, and we already pretty much laid out what was the best way for him to move forward. It was to be to do, he can just do another executive order and expunge it. Mm-hmm. But while I'm talking about this, I want to make sure that you guys know as well about how damaging uh, these marijuana convictions are. So this is from the ACLU. Uh, it talks about, it was a report on the war on marijuana in black and white. This is actually out of 2013. So this is 11 years ago. Uh, staggering racial bias. Marijuana is ru- it, use is roughly among equal among blacks and whites, yet blacks are 3.73 times as likely to be arrested for marijuana possession. So with that being said, out of the ACLU, um, you know, it, it would behoove somebody like Westmore to to expunge those convictions because then that would affect disproportionately a lot of black people. Now, while we're talking about what what Maryland did in the legalization route. I think it's important that, you know, I'm in Florida. Did you know that we actually have on the docket for this November our own legalization through ballot initiatives in Florida? Mm -hmm. So it says Florida Amendment 3, Marijuana Legalization Initiative. It says Florida Amendment 3, the Marijuana Legalization Initiative is on the ballot in Florida as an initiated constitutional amendment for November 5th. Uh, It says a yes vote supports legalizing marijuana for adults 21 years old and older and allowing individuals to possess up to three ounces. A no vote opposes legalizing marijuana for adults use in Florida. Uh, Overview. It says the initiative would legalize recreational marijuana for adults 21 years old and older. Individuals will be allowed to possess up to three ounces, about 85 grams with up to five grams in the form of concentrate. So concentrate would be something that's probably that you could probably put in a- um, Like a vape. In a vape, yeah. Says existing medical marijuana treatment centers will be authorized under the initiative to sell marijuana to adults for personal use. The Florida state legislator could provide by state law for the licensure of entities other than existing medical marijuana treatment centers to cultivate and sell marijuana products. Medical marijuana was adopted by Florida voters in 2016 by a vote of 71% to 29%. So just so that everybody, you know, has that, um, I'm going to put that in that link in the chat. But if even if you don't want to vote for anybody who is a politician, you still have a ballot initiative that will directly affect you in the state of Florida. Well, this this is kind of reminiscent to me of um, when 
it was a ballot initiative that um what was it um uh, ex cons people who had done their time that they would be able to have their voting rights back because you serve your time you should be able to get all of your freedoms back and yeah. um DeSantis sent around his goons to go and, and round people up for voting even though they were legally able to vote after getting their rights back and it was like oh well oh uh, oh uh, you didn't pay a fine over here and just making up reasons to try to still keep these people off the voting rolls and so yeah. as long as like uh florida is slanted you know red right now i wonder even if you get that in how much court uh court fighting that you're gonna have to do with the with the florida supreme court to actually force him to have to do it I don't know, but I think it's worth still going after. Definitely. But, you know, and let me let me talk to the millennials. I'm sorry, the Gen Z right quick. <laughs> Those of you who are Gen Z, including some members of my family. Wouldn't it be beneficial to be able to get your gas from your plug at a storefront legally so that 12 can't come and harass you for having it. I would think that's actually, it gives that big old 200 pound monkey slash pig off your back. So if I were you, if you want to be able to get your gas legally, then you might want to register to vote so that you can at least vote on this, even if you don't want to vote for a politician. I'm just saying. Exactly. If, if if I can add to that, you know, <laughs> wouldn't you like to be able to get your gas and be able to get multiple different octanes? I mean, be able to choose from all different qualities of octanes. You get your 87, you get your 89. You might want to get it ethanol style. You can you can do all kinds of things. You can get it in all kinds of different forms and be able to do it in a nice, clean environment. Also, not have to deal with the awkward conversations and the meeting up in, in, in weird places and, and cars over here on the side of the road to get your gas. You can actually meet in a reputable place. Mm -hmm. In fact, some of these places you can do delivery. Yeah. Now, let me share this with you, too, because those of you we're still talking to you, Gen Z's. Mm -hmm. uh, it says uh, this is the people who are supporting the campaign. Um, one of the things uh, it says, there's no evidence that the legalization of the substance for medical recreational use at state level, as 37 states already have done, has boosted underage consumption for the regulated marketplace. The continued black market sale of the substance perpetuates a culture of criminality. If adult use substance is legalized, Florida users will have the accountability, transparency, and regulations in place to ensure products are not laced with or contain potentially deadly chemicals. Meaning to Gen Z, your gas will be pure. Mm -hmm. Meaning it's not going to be anything that's messed up. Yeah, wouldn't you be happier to be able to know what you go for is exactly what you go for. And it's the same consistency every time they not, they not watering it down. There's, there's no spraying nothing on it. And, and you hoping, oh, let me double check this to make sure I'm not getting hustled. You're able yeah. to, in fact, you're able to be able to know the content and be able to say, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing this grade. It's, it's, this, this is exactly what I want. Mm -hmm. And yeah. also, as the the market burgeons more and more, you're able to have competition. Don't you? Don't you? Free market capitalists love competition, don't y'all? Wouldn't wouldn't you be able to get that? I mean, and then you know how many thousands and thousands of dollars in taxes have? I'm sorry, thousands, millions of dollars in taxes that these states have been able to procure through the legalization, like. I mean, this has literally helped them to fund education, to fund infrastructure. I mean, come on now. Because, I mean, I'm in a state where it, it's, it, it, it has been for a while, you know. And the people, I, I mean, you'd be surprised the people who, 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 who use. And it's not, it's, 
I, I know like they do these caricatures of, oh, it's this hood, black or brown person who's the one doing that. No, you walk into these places and you see people of all different walks of life, all different ages and various different reasons. Some people, hey, I'm just trying to get my party on. Some people like, yo, I got PTSD. I use mm -hmm. this. It helps me cool out. You got some people's like, yo, I got pain in my knees, my shoulders, my back, and this helps ease things off so I don't have to deal with narcotics. And so there's various different reasons. I, I just think it makes perfect sense to let adults do what adults need to do and get out of their business instead of telling them what to do. I'm going to share with you a user here in Florida that doesn't look like you or I. Here we go. Boom. Attorney John Morgan. Oh, shoot. Morgan and Morgan. Yes. He literally confessed on camera to being a user here in Florida. I would not have guessed that. Not yes. Him. He sounds just like this. He's, a, he's an attorney. He has his offices all over the country. And yes, he uses. And here's the thing. He doesn't look like us. He doesn't look like you and me. Right? And so when it comes to and, different people. And don't forget this part. Not only does he look different, this man is in a different socioeconomic category than we are on another level. <laughs> I'm in, I'm, I, dude, he has branches out here in LA. Yeah. I mean, yeah. now, granted, my, my Pandora is still attached to Florida, so I, I, I still get my Florida commercials. I'd be craving some Publix uh, 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 cupcakes every now and then. But uh, but anyway, but my, my point is, this ain't no like little small business owner. This is a big dog. Yeah. Yeah. This is a multimillionaire here. Yes. Who has hundreds of practices all over the country. Yeah. John Morgan. And on top of it, he's been fighting for recreational legalization in Florida for years. Mm -hmm. He has been pushing for legalization. So, you know, he's championing this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah, him, his wife, Ultima Morgan, is also a lawyer. I think yep. his three sons are also three lawyers. Sons. His mm -hmm. brother is a, is a lawyer, all with their same law firm. Like, they, they got millions of millions of dollars mm -hmm. and yet he you get the gas too he got a plug yeah. too <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and think and think about it when he moved back from tennessee because he spent a stint living in tennessee before he moved back to florida mm -hmm. y'all think that he wasn't getting gassed up while he was in florida please y'all think he wasn't having somebody come out to the mansion and drop him off something Come on mm. now. And you mm. know how many, and I guarantee you, there's a whole lot of other politicians down there in Florida who, oh, well, I'm not going to vote to approve it, but I have no problem with you dropping this bag off for me. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim Price, who is part of the Orlando chapter of RBN, says, everyone I know has seen that guy smack downtown. <laughs> 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 Oh gosh, oh, Tim, you are the gift that keeps on giving. Um, so yeah, I, that's that's what's going on as far as Westmore. Uh, but dare I say, you know, Maryland could could have definitely did better. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much for watching my channel, and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. More head kisses and have a beautiful day.